This video is presented to you by Physics for Students. To know more, please visit us at physicsforstudents.com. Walking down from 112 Mercer Street to the Institute for Advanced Studies, New Jersey, the old professor sometimes felt alone. Within his mind, he had many thoughts. We are talking of the year 1933, when the professor was middle-aged. He has witnessed 54 long revolutions of the Earth around the Sun. He has already calculated the reason why starlight is deflected during the solar eclipse and has shaken the foundation of classical physics in his own whims and fancies. The unmindful professor wore baggy pants. His uncombed long white hair showed the direction of the blowing wind and an occasional puff from his long pipe reminded us that he savoured every moment as he strolled down the road. His walking suggested that his mind was busy in thoughts. His looks were strong and firm yet an occasional joke would make him laugh to the fullest and his big belly swelling up and down with the gust of the joke which might have interested him. His love towards food, relishing over his pipe, his frankness and affection towards women remind us the following lines from Tennyson. I cannot rest from travel I will drink life to the lease. The professor was in exile from Germany during the time when Nazism was occupying entire Europe. To save from the fist of this enormous power, he left his fatherland and settled here under the canopy of the dark shaded trees whose mild tremulous breeze gave him thoughts and filled his soul with tranquility and bliss. Princeton allured him, as it did to many other luminaries, including Oppenheimer, Hermann Well, and John von Neumann. It provided the best possible facilities in the world to make your mind think and engage with some of the finest brains in the world. Founded in 1930 by a philanthropist named Abraham Flexner, the Institute nourishes some of the best brains and aims towards the progress of human understanding. Our professor asked for a salary of 3,000 US dollars, to which Flexner offered 16,000 US dollars. Devouring time, blunt thou the lion's paws, and make the earth devour her own sweet brood. Pluck the keen teeth from the fierce tiger's jaws, and burn the long-lived phoenix in her blood. Although time devours everything, yet after twelve long years, on the same road, on the same path, we found the professor. Now, in his sixties, was accompanied by another person. His companion was a pale young man, wearing a white linen dress with a muffler around his neck, even during summer. This man would peep from his dark, thick glasses to a passerby and be neatly dressed. He measured around 5 feet 6 inches. History accounts that he was a hypochondriac from a fear that mounted since his childhood from an attack of rheumatic fever. The institute still recounts the precise and accurate measurement of his rendezvous. He almost drew the Cartesian coordinate system at its best precision. His liking towards Walt Disney, cartoons, is still one of the most interesting discussions among his fellow colleagues. 
He smiled from the corner of his cheeks, being careful not to exceed a chuckle to a laugh. The duo strolled and talked on the long winding streets of this newly formed institute. Both exiled from their same fatherland. As the road ended, they both headed towards their offices inside the institute again. To be seen in the evening when the oblong shadows of the trees would cast a magical spell on the turf. By this time, you might have guessed about whom we are talking. The white-haired professor was no one other than Albert Einstein, and his younger companion was Kurt Gödel, the greatest logician since Aristotle. The friendship between the scientist and the logician is a long story. As a matter of fact, they became best friends, as Einstein later recounted to have the privilege of walking with Godel to go home. Pale Yu Grouse, Harry A. Wolfson Professor of Philosophy at Brandeis University in his book, A World Without Time, The Forgotten Legacy of Godel and Einstein, writes, Washed up onto America's shores by the storm of Nazism, that raged in Europe in the 1930s. The two men had awakened to find themselves stranded in the same hushed academic retreat, Princeton's Institute for Advanced Study, an exclusive intellectual club whose members had only one assigned duty, to think. But Godel and Einstein already belonged to an even more exclusive club, Together with another German-speaking theorist, Werner Heisenberg, they were the authors of the three most fundamental scientific results of the century. Each man's discovery, moreover, established a profound and disturbing limitation. Einstein was gregarious in nature, while Gödel was solemn. Einstein loved food, whereas Godel would examine the food whether there was any poison that conspired to kill him. They were poles apart, yet they developed a strong friendship. In one of his letters, Godel wrote that he never recovered from the pain that he had after Einstein's death. Godel was born in the year 1906, April 28th, a year later of Einstein's Annus Mirabilis. Inquisitive from his childhood, he earned the nickname, the Hurwarum, the Mr. Y. A silent audience in the Vienna Circle, Godel attended lectures with Hans Hahn, Rudolf Carnap, and Moritz Schlick. He joined the University of Vienna at the age of 18 and completed his doctoral dissertation when he was 23. Gödel's monumental achievements had been Incompleteness Theorem, published in 1931 as On Formally Undecidable Prepositions of Principia Mathematica and Related Systems. To understand the technical aspect of Gödel's Incompleteness Theorem, we would have to create a different podcast for this. However, a simple layman's understanding would be something like this. For generations, mathematicians and logicians have struggled to create a complete system, a system that should have proof. A mathematically proven system or a proof-driven system should be complete and one which is not proved is termed as incomplete. It is equally important that a system should not have contradictions. A person is dead as well as alive. 
Once we have a system that is devoid of contradictions, we call it a consistent system. Dating back to Euclidean postulates, we have seen that geometry as well as other mathematical systems are based on axioms. An axiomatic system is accepted and is considered to be self-evidently true. Gödel said, a formal system is either incomplete, that is, it is not mathematically provable, or it is inconsistent. Example, the light lit up the room, yet the room was dark. It carried a huge impact on the foundation and philosophy of mathematics. It destroyed the way classical logic worked. His works are important in the basic process of human thinking, the way logic and computation work. Some thought it put an end to Hilbert's problems. Some thought it terminated classical logicism. It actually revolutionized the way we perceive mathematics and logic the way we imagine, the way we compute. He went forward even to study relativity and found something astounding. <laughs>